This week on The Climb, a week of preparation for Tulane. Rip and run, rip and run. The wisdom of June Jones. A business trip, Mustang style. And an all access pass to the biggest win of the year. As the SMU Mustangs gathered for practice on a crisp late October morning, it was a team at a crossroads. Wins over UAB. Touchdown, SMU! Washington State. Touchdown, SMU! Rice. Now he's throwing quarter of the end zone. Aldrin Robinson with a great adjustment on the ball. Touchdown, SMU! And Tulsa showed promise of great things to come. 3-0 in the conference. We were pretty sure we could run the table. But back-to-back -back losses to Navy in Houston dropped the record to 4-4. Four and four. The Navy game took a lot out of us, I think, both physically first and also just kind of mentally and emotionally. I don't think we took Houston as serious as we were supposed to, and that's why they came in here and did what they did. With a 3-1 record in Conference USA, SMU is tied for the lead in the West Division. But Houston holds the tiebreaker. To grab a spot in the CUSA championship game, the Ponies probably need to win out and hope for a little luck to come their way. SMU has much to be proud of. Quarterback Kyle Padron has thrown for 21 touchdowns and leads Conference USA in total offense. He's continuing to grow, man. He's getting better every day. He's played phenomenal. He's our leader. Uh, that's point blank. Kyle Padron is our quarterback. Sophomore running back Zach Line averages 6.4 yards per carry with five touchdowns to his credit. The running game is now one of the strengths of the offense. When we run the ball, we have to run it effectively, and that's something that we take pride in, Zach take pride in, and this, you know, the offense as a unit takes pride in. Kyle steps up, fires deep down the middle, one-handed grab! Darius Johnson at the 30! The Darius Johnson leads the receiving core with 50 catches, and Aldrick Robinson is always a threat to take it to the house. Into the end zone, touchdown SMU! The Mustangs average over 410 yards in total offense. That is only translated into 27.2 points a game. Well, we were four and four last year at this stage, and four and four now. But in almost every category, we're up from where we were last year. So we are, we have improved, but we're not where we really want to be. I want this. You get here, there. You got the shoot. You're the over. Okay, here we go. Death. On the defensive side of the ball, the Mustangs are young. Of the 11 starters, eight are underclassmen. Junior Taylor Thompson has emerged as a force on the D-line. Um, he's a big part of the defense. He, he pushes offensive linemen back. He makes play for the linebackers. He opens gaps. He's, he's important. The linebacking core of Pete Fleps, Taylor Reed, Yuri Enga, and Jagera Davis has flourished in Tom Mason's 3-4 system. The defensive backs are talented, but hampered by injuries and inexperience. We knew that people could get hurt. People like Benny, young cornerbacks like Acker, Chris Parks, they have to step up. I mean, uh, we know that. We, we have faith in them. Special teams have been both a strength and a weakness as SMU continues to block place kicks with regularity. But returners have had trouble holding on to punts, and SMU has given up two back-breaking kickoff returns. Still, this is very much a program headed in the right direction. SMU's talent level continues to improve, and June Jones and his staff have given this team a winner's mentality. The key now is to find some consistency against Tulane. Now it's learning how to have that killer instinct where everybody's on the same page to go for the kill at the same time, where everybody's on one accord to have that killer instinct when everybody is, is, is together and all focusing on the same thing. A week of practice and study has the team eager to return to the playing field, determined to post a mark in the win column.
it's a must that we win out. We feel like this is our conference. I take this one as the most important game of my life right now because this game could, like I said, it could turn the, turn the tide in the season right now. Slide left. When we come back, Q&A with head coach June Jones and some of his answers might surprise you. My B, line up, same level as the safeties and back pedal straight back, right in the middle of the field. June Jones is the man charged with returning the SMU football program to greatness. He has the Mustangs tied for the lead in Conference USA's Western Division. In this week's interview segment, we serve up seven questions running the gamut from recruiting to practice philosophy. Question one, recruiting is the lifeblood of a football team. Are you seeing a higher caliber athlete express interest in SMU? Okay, hey, slap right there, match that now. Definitely, uh, I think the bowl game and the national TV exposure has really helped us. Uh, um, we have had inquiries and we're, our reception has been totally different than it was when we first got here. The school has a great reputation and, uh, and now it's uh, starting to have a reputation for football again. Question two. What is it that makes SMU a special place to go to school and play football? Well, I think the people here are pretty exceptional, number one. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, it's like an Ivy League school in the middle of Dallas. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful campus. It's, a, it's a, you know, great people. Uh, Dallas is just one of the best cities in the country. Question three. Do you have to recruit nationally to be successful, or is there enough talent in North Texas? Well, we're getting we're getting inquiries nationally more. During the year, we don't go that far. We still talk to a lot of kids nationally, and uh, the response has been pretty positive. Question four. What do you want people to know about your program that they don't? About that time, about that time. I've always said that we do things differently as a staff. Uh, our players, I think uh, we relate to the players a whole lot differently than, than uh, these kids probably have ever had anybody uh, right. around them the like, like my field. staff. Good job there! You know, I think at the same time, you know, they got an opportunity here to get a great education and, and play for a great group of coaches and, uh, and people. The zone dogs versus trips. Question five. How much time do the players spend on the practice field each week? And how much time do they spend in meetings? Um, it's about 50-50, yeah. Um, we're allowed uh, four hours a day. Uh, so we do, well, we do probably uh, hour 30, hour 20 minute meeting and two hours on the practice field. Don't guess. Say go. Question six, you don't hit during the week. What's your thinking on that? That's it. Uh, if you're going to lose a player, and I've had a pretty good record for 12 years in college, 11 years in college, that you know, I, 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 if we lose a guy, we lose him in a game. We, we don't lose him uh, in practice. And the, the bottom line is, practice is about doing things right mentally and uh, uh, physically working hard and uh, and doing what you're supposed to do. Alignment and assignments. You know, you're going to widen if that guy's going back, right? But if he takes that guy, then you're over the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Question seven. You've assembled a great staff. You have excellent coordinators and position coaches. How much coaching do you actually get to do? Um, I coach the receivers and the quarterbacks with Dan and Jeff. You know, those guys uh, coach them individually in the meetings and do the corrections and, and so on and so forth after we meet as a staff. Got it. 90-32 draw. Defensively, I, I just uh, let them know what I want and, and we evaluate what we've been doing and how we can improve it. But I, I delegate. Uh, I think you get the most out of your people when you do that. When we come back, it's a road trip to New Orleans. 